Hello there, students. Uh, welcome to Physics 152. Happy New Year. It's great to see all of you. Uh, my name is Jason Harlow. If you don't know me, I'm the Practicals Coordinator for this course. And we are starting off with Chapter 14 on fluids. And what's interesting is we're going to get quickly into electricity and magnetism starting next week. Uh, but we wanted to start with fluids because a lot of the ideas about how flux works uh, with electric fields and even how current works inside uh, uh, metal wires, there are good analogies if you know some stuff about fluid and fluid flow. So, uh, for the experiments this week, I actually want to do a little experiment uh, involving fluid flow. So, uh, and it's based on this problem. A tall, wide cylinder of water is filled to a height y2. It is open at the top. A small hole is cut in the side at height y1, and water squirts out sideways. And there's a picture here. How far x does the water go? So this is the cylinder as viewed from the side. There's the top of the surface of, the surface of the water, which is a distance y2 from the bottom. Um, we've cut a hole in the side of the cylinder at some height y1 from the bottom, and now water can squirt out um, horizontally. And you can imagine the water going on a kind of a parabolic path and then hitting the ground, the horizontal surface here, of some tray or something, at a distance x, uh, horizontal distance x from the hole. So you can treat water as an ideal fluid. So incompressible, meaning it can't, it doesn't change its, uh, you know, volume with pressure. Non-viscous, meaning that it doesn't have dissipative frictional forces as as it flows past, uh, you know, the walls. And laminar flow. So laminar flow, meaning that as it flows, you can create these streamlines. So what we're going to imagine is a streamline going from some point two here at the surface down to some point one at the hole. And if you can imagine laminar flow going, then we have something called Bernoulli's equation, which is equation 14.26 from your book, which relates uh, pressure, P1, to V1, the speed of point 0.1, and Y1, the height of y Y1. Uh, so the pressure plus 1 half rho V1 squared plus rho times G times Y1 it's going to be the same at other points. And so we're just equating for two different points. So p, lowercase p is the pressure in pascals. Rho is the density of the fluid, water in this case. G is 9.8. Uh, y1 is the height of the hole. And y2 is the height of the water. So v1 is the speed that the water shoots horizontally out of the hole, since that's the way the water is flowing. And V2 is how fast the surface of water is going down at the top of the cylinder, downward. So, now this is uh, about fluid in a fairly small container where Y1 is not that different from Y2. We know that air pressure will actually decrease if you go up a mountain or something like that and uh, increase if, as you go down the mountain. But here we are just talking about centimeters sort of difference. So the pressure is about the same. So we can subtract that pressure from both sides of Bernoulli. The other trick we're going to do to solve this problem is to neglect the downward speed of the surface of the water up here. Now, one way I can do this in practice is I can continue kind of refilling water at the top as this goes out. But um, one thing to notice is that the area of this little teeny hole could be much smaller than the area, the cross-sectional area of the whole cylinder. So if you look at the equation of continuity, which was a little earlier in Chapter 14, A1 V1 equals A2 V2. So V2 will be uh, the ratio of the area of the hole to the whole cylinder times V1. So it's much, much less than V1. So we're going to assume the speed of that surface going downwards is about zero. So Bernoulli's equation then becomes the P's, uh, subtract the P1 and P2 from both sides. I got rid of the, the V2, and so I've just got 1 half rho V1 squared plus rho G Y1 equals rho G uh, times Y2. So there's the density of water in all uh, terms. We can divide both sides by rho. 
And now I want to solve out for v1, or I'm going to solve for v1 squared. 2 times g times y2 minus y1. So the greater the height, the faster the, the water comes out, which sort of makes sense. Now, next, it's a projectile motion uh, problem, something that you should be very familiar with from Physics 151. You have a, a stream of water initially going horizontally with speed v1, and it's at a height y1. So what's the range? So there's lots of ways. I'm sure you're very, very good at solving these kinds of things. Um, I What I did is I used uh, time. The time for the vertical motion is equal to the time for the horizontal motion. So the uh, vertical motion is just y1 equals 1 half g t squared because it starts with zero y velocity and, and goes downward with acceleration g. Uh, and then the x motion is constant, vx equals uh, x over t, and that's v1, so that's going to be constant. So I can solve for, I can eliminate t by solving for t and plugging it in. Anyway, I get y1 equals g times x squared over 2 times v1 squared, where x is the range and y is this initial height. But we've already, uh, back from Bernoulli's equation, solved for v1 squared in terms of y2 minus y1. So we can plug that in right now, and we get that y1 is equal to g times x squared over 2 times 2g times y2 minus y1. So what's interesting is that there's a g on the top and the bottom, they cancel. So somehow gravity doesn't matter. Anyway, uh, we can solve out for x the range. x equals the square root of 4 times y1. Um, times y2 minus y1. Okay, so now we have uh, a theoretical relationship uh, to give the range of the stream of water in terms of the height of the hole uh, and the height of the water. So now we want to do a little experiment in our house to see if we can uh, verify this theoretical relationship. So what I've got is I went into the recycling bin outside and I found this bottle, uh, this water bottle. It's a two liter bottle. And I want to just put a hole in the side of it. I've also got a pan and I've got um, something to poke a hole in the side with. So I'm gonna take this sharp corkscrew and I'm gonna carefully try to po poke a hole without poking myself through the, the bottle. So I've done it. I've made a hole in the plastic bottle. It's around sort of halfway up. Whoop. Doesn't have to be exactly halfway up. Um, but it should be at a place on the bottle where the water will squirt out sideways. I don't know if you can sort of see that little hole right there. So now, time to actually uh, do the experiment, see if this works. So next is to try to actually do it, which means you have to fill your container up with water, leave the cap off so that it's open at the top, uh, and try to set it up in a big tray so that the water doesn't get all over the place, and then let the stream go. And you're going to need your ruler handy. Um, there are actually three measurements that you need. So the first one, which is easy to do even um, without the water flowing, is the height of the hole. So the height of the hole from the, or the, uh, from the tray, the hole here, you can read that off your ruler, that's one measurement, that's Y1. Then there's going to be Y2, which is going to be actually changing as the water drains out of this, and X. So that's the real trick is to measure x and y2 at the same time, because they're both going to be kind of changing. So let's start it up. Get this going sideways here. So, and I also want to wait till this is kind of at the cylindrical part. This this all narrows here. So let's wait till it gets to right around there. Then I'm going to quickly measure from here um, x at the same time as from the bottom to here, there's y2. So you've got three measurements, and there's y1. As you can see, as this whole thing drains out, you can see the x is, x is shrinking as y2 minus y1 gets less and less. Okay, so good luck. Uh, I hope this works for you, and I hope that you don't get any water in your laptop.